Welcome back to the 2017 Dallas Regional Championships. My name is Gabby Snyder. I'm still here with Adam Doricott. And as you may have just heard, this round we are streaming Tiffany Stanley versus Mitchell Davies. I did reveal that one a little <laughs> bit earlier. I took the wind out of your cells on that one. Definitely going to be an exciting match. We saw it on the list and couldn't resist picking it. So I'm looking forward to it and I'm assuming you are too. Yeah, you know, Tiffany is a good friend of mine. She always brings very interesting teams. I've had some very close matches with her in the past. So um, she's definitely looking to bring her A game here today and I'm excited to see it. I think as well, she's got a tough opponent in Mitchell though. While we have some players who are, this will be their first event in the 17 format. They miss London, they miss San Jose. Mitchell showed at his event He's really picked up this format quickly. He knows what he's doing, and a really solid performance at San Jose Regionals is something he's going to want to carry on into this event. Definitely, and you know, watching him play in San Jose, he was just so focused on the game in front of him. I think he really has the 2017 mindset down, which is very important moving forward. I think the big question is, will he be running the same team, or will he be trying to make some adjustments maybe to, uh, you know, sort of adapt to the evolving metagame as we were talking about earlier? I think he's one of those players that makes adjustments. A lot of players do, unless they feel there was something that in their play that held their team back. I think moving between events, making those adjustments is very important, of course. Picking up on the meta shift and making those slight adjustments. If he brings an answer to hard trick room, then that seems just going to be even better for him. So I'll be curious to see if he brings exactly the same. And what Tiffany brings could be a complete surprise to yeah, me. Yeah, it's going to be a complete surprise to me as too, unfortunately. I've been trying to say hi to her all day, and I haven't seen her yet. So hi, Tiff. <laughs> Sorry I pulled you for stream, but, you know, I think it's going to be a great battle. So It definitely should be, and I'm excited to just get going with this tournament, of course. We've got so many more rounds today. We've got eight more rounds we coming up. We have eight more rounds. With nine rounds today and a top 16 wow. tomorrow. So I hope you like us, because we're going to be here all day. <laughs> You know, I gotta say, this has been a great turnout for such a new format. I guess trainers are really excited to uh, start playing more 2017. I think a lot of people as well, it's brought back some players who used to play it before. What it's got about it is a sort of feel of an older game. A lot of the Pokemon are very balanced. There's nothing too defining as we've seen in previous years where the Mega Pokemon and of course those Primal Pokemon were particularly defining for a format. So <laughs> this new format has a lot of balance to it. Pretty much every Pokemon available has a use and can be picked. So I'm gonna be interested to see if every Pokemon gets used at least once this season. I know we've seen the Alola starters in their fully evolved forms. We've seen a little bit of Incineroar, a little bit of Primarina, but I haven't seen any Decidueye yet, so I oh, want to see that one. I want to see Decidueye too. I mean, Rowlet is my favorite starter. I am definitely hashtag Team Rowlet, so seeing a Decidueye I, would make me very happy. It's uh, Team Litten for me. Oh, uh, I guess we're rivals then, aren't we? I believe so. I think <laughs> that's how that works. All right, well, maybe we'll battle it out later and just... Uh, Figure out, you know, who's going to be the first champion one on of Alola. One, Rowlet versus Lynn. <laughs> I'll take that fight. I hope you like uh, accuracy lowering, lowering moves because you're probably going to see a lot of those in it's that fine fight. Fine by me. <laughs> Absolutely fine. We have our players seated now, so we'll be grabbing our team sheets momentarily, and we're going to be able to take a quick look at their team before we get into it. So we shouldn't be too long before we get you back into a game. And um, we actually have the team sheets just delivered to us. Just like magic. Uh, shout outs to our runner who's been helping us out today. Uh, so let's start with Tiffany's team. Uh, Tiffany is running Tapu Fini, Alolan Muck, Marowak, Alolan Executor, Mudsdale, and Formosa. Whereas Mitchell is running Tapu Lele, Formosa, Celesteela, Garchomp, Politoed, and Vikavolt. I believe this is the first Vika Volt we're going to be seeing all season on stream. It really is, and it's something I've been excited to see. I love the Pokemon myself, but it's just a good question of can it do as much as some of the other electric types in the format? Of course, we've seen Tapu Koku be exceptionally popular. Magnazone rose to prominence with the popularity of Celesteela being able to trap it in. But Vika Volt probably brings something completely new to the table. So if Mitchell's team is built around that, perhaps supporting it, maybe it could shine and really put some pressure on Tiffany. But her team is definitely not something to be sniffed at. No, it really is not. That Executor especially. Um, Executor is one of those Pokemon I think a lot of people have been craning their necks waiting to see it in this metagame. No? Okay. Um, but, you know, it's a very interesting Pokemon. It did gain the a dragon type it, when it 
metamorphosized into its Alolan form. Uh, so whether or not that's going to help or hinder Tiffany is yet to be seen. You know, we do see a Tapu Lele on Mitchell's team, which is part fairy type. So it might not be a weakness that Executor is, you know, sort of happy to have. And whether or not she's going to be able to bring it to this match uh, is really up in the air. Though I'm sure that Mudsdale would definitely benefit from having a very slow Pokemon like Executor there to back it up. Well, Executor has a lot of options as well. It can be very offensive, but it's also really hard to get rid of when it's on the field. We've seen it with some interesting abilities. It does have the choice between Frisk and Harvest as well, um, but it d Harvest usually does better with a Sun. Obviously, we don't see a Sunsetter, which this year would be Torkoal, in fact. <laughs> so that we don't see that on Tiffany's team. So maybe it'll be going for the Frisk, and that's actually a really good ability. It brings a lot of information to the game, and in these best of three scenarios, information is great. So if on turn one, you find out two items on your opponent's team, Fantastic. You've got more information starting that turn than your opponent. Yeah, though I have to wonder, because we are playing three games, I mean, granted, we do not see, uh, we're probably not going to see the harvest ability on that executor, whether or not Frisk is somewhat redundant. You know, a lot of channers sort of, uh, you know, play their way through game one a little bit, not sure what's going on, but then they use that information to capitalize on games two and three. So I guess time will have to tell us whether or not Tiffany's able to capitalize on that information if she does lead that executor with Frisk. Yeah, that will be something interesting. But what Tiffany has done, actually, she's capitalized on the new Alolan forms a lot. She really has. Three of them in this team, uh, all of her Pokemon, none of them returning cast members from previous formats in years. And I think Alolan Marowak could be exceptionally useful here. And I love the Alolan Mark. It's one of my favorites. Oh, and I think it's, it's gonna be such a pain to uh, face on the battlefield, though. You know, that dark and that poison typing together, you know, with Snarl, uh, possibility for Snarl, the possibility for poison type attacks to stop the Tapus. Like, there's so many options. And looking at Mitchell's team, I'm not really sure if he's going to be able to play around this Muck. Well, he does have the Garchomp, and Garchomp, of course, Having those ground type moves, the only weakness that Muck has could be really good for him. Tiffany, veering away from what a lot of players have done, where pairing the Muck with the Tapu Bulu, usually they use the Tapu Bulu to keep Muck safe from Earthquake. Now we've seen a quick adaptation throughout the weeks where Garchomp has been taking Groundium Z to try and get around that. Of course, not affected by the grassy terrain. So it'd be interesting to see if Mitchell's got that, but it's not so scared of it with no Tapu Bulu to keep it safe on Tiffany's side of the field. All right, and these trainers are going into team preview. So once again, for those of you just turning in, we have Tiffany Stanley versus Mitchell Davies. Tiffany is running Tapu Fini, Muck, Alolan Marowak, Executor, Mudsdale, and Formosa versus Mitchell's team of Tapu Lele, Formosa, Celesteela, Garchomp, Politoed, and Vikavolt. And once again, uh, the Muck, the Marowak, and the Executor on Tiffany's team are all their Alolan forms. Yeah, very exciting to see. And there's definitely some interesting matchups. I do want to see what Vikavolt can do. Of course, there's nothing particularly weak. It is an electric bug type, so electric attacks are going to be a bit dangerous to throw around with Marowak potentially in the pocket for Tiffany, being able to switch that in and use that lightning rod. But he's not really hitting anything outside the Tapu Fini with those electric attacks. So I think that will be the key to Mitchell's victory if he wants to really capitalize this. Can he work around the Tapu Fini? We saw what it did in San Jose for Enosh, and it really is tough to get rid of if you're not overly prepared for it. So I think Tiffany is going to be looking to do a lot with Tapu Fini, while Mitchell looks to do a lot with Vikavolt here. So it looks like these trainers are ready to get started. We'll have to see if Tiff did decide to bring that Tapu Fini and to see if Mitchell decided to bring that Vikavolt. Either way, I'm sure it's going to be a very exciting match as Tiffany sends out her Tapu Fini and her Alolan Muck as a lead versus Mitchell's Vikavolt and Garchomp. I believe we just saw all the Pokemon we talked about before this match. So good work, team. Uh, between the pair of us, we cover them all. I think the matchup really favors Mitchell here on paper. Just looking at the Pokemon on the field, obviously Vikavolt puts good pressure on the Tapu Fini, and Garchomp puts good pressure on the Alolan Muck. Vikavolt having that levitate ability m means Garchomp's a little bit freer to Earthquake, so that's very nice. But it's not quite that simple, of course. Two Pokemon in the back for Tiffany. It's an interesting matchup. It looks like you want to bring in Alolan uh, Marowak to get Lightning Rod, but you don't want to switch it in on an Earthquake as well.
So we see Muck protect this turn. Garchomp going straight for that Earthquake. So Vikapult's going to dodge it thanks to its Levitate ability. It does connect with the Tapu Fini, but it doesn't really deal that much damage. Fa Tapu Fini is still sitting pretty there with a Moonblast back into the Garchomp. This will certainly be a knockout unless that Garchomp is uh, surprisingly bulky. So interestingly enough, we did see the Vikavolt target the Alolan Muck and the Garchomp with a Discharge, not going to deal any damage to them, but Tapu Fini is knocked out. Very, very interesting play. The Disquake combination <laughs> that we haven't seen uh, rise to popularity for probably six years now. We finally see somebody put it together as a really good pairing, the Vikavolt Garchomp, and it takes the knockout on Tapu Fini. Discharge also getting around the threat of Lightning Rod, because it doesn't matter if you switch in Lightning Rod, Discharge will still hit everything on the field. So a very good turn for Mitchell. I think he led that game absolutely perfectly, and Tiffany didn't really have much of an answer to it. So she's going to be fighting back with a Pokemon disadvantage, but bringing Feromosa here could potentially be a very good answer to that. Yeah, we see Garchomp use a Earthquake again, moving first on the field. It's going to deal damage to all the Pokemon this time around, but whether or not it's enough to knock out that Muck is to be seen. Muck hanging on with just a little bit of health there, and it activates Muck's held item, which looks like it'll be restoring some health, but whether or not, yes, it's the Ayapapa Berry. So rather than a Citrus Berry, it restores a little more health, which is always much appreciated. Ice Beam from that Formosa to KO that Garchomp, deal that last bit of damage, and activate Formosa's Beast Boost, which boosts its special attack. And finally, we see another Discharge from that Vikavolt, unfortunately knocking out the Formosa and leaving Muck in not really the greatest position, but it does connect with a Stone Edge, which misses the knockout. Well, there was a lot going on. There in was that a turn. lot going on in that turn. We'll start with obviously the fact that Garchomp went first. That's information Tiffany needs to take. And Mitchell's showing a card there, of course. Garchomp not usually able to outspeed Feromosa, so likely information for her, it's holding the Choice Scarf, which kind of makes sense in the fact that he just wants to get this very fast Disquake off. Of course, Feromosa picking up the knockout in return, but still getting knocked out by the Discharge, so the Beast Boost not a threat going forward. We do see Muck is going to be very difficult to take down, of course, holding that Ayapapa Berry. And we do see as well the Stone Edge on Muck, not something we commonly see. That is definitely going to be causing a problem uh, for that Viker Vault staying around. Yes, we do see Marowak switch in on Tiffany's side of the field. Mitchell sending in his Politoed, so unfortunately for Marowak, its fire type attacks will not be that helpful here, and it has to watch out that that Politoed doesn't target it with a water type move such as Scald. But you know, rather than reveal any more information moving forward, Tiffany forfeits, which I think is a great use of that forfeit feature. You know, it's game one. Uh, it wasn't really going that well in her favor when you think about things. She went to a, a very early disadvantage thanks to that most likely choice scarfed Garchomp Earthquake and Discharge combo. So now we're going to see her t decide to forfeit and you know, keep that information to herself and maybe start working on a strategy moving forwards. Yeah, Mitchell taking a very comprehensive win there. Of course, he, I think he just led perfectly. Showed off Disquake, which I'm quite excited about. A bit of a throwback for me. Uh, and I like the, the amount of pressure it put down on Tiffany's team. Her whole team kind of didn't have an answer to it. I, you know, I said at the beginning of the game she relied on Tapu Fini. And that, of course, just got knocked out in turn one. So losing that was a bit of a problem for her. Uh, and I think she's going to have to adapt to this team. Mitchell showing some cards, though. It is going to be good information for her, obviously, the item on the Garchomp, and just the general strategy of his team, something she can pick up on, and I think she's going to be able to play around this and hopefully take us to a game three here. Yeah, I think if I were Mitchell, I would definitely be thinking about bringing the same lead, though. It, it may seem sort of obvious, and it may uh, Tiffany may have the opportunity to sort of adjust, maybe send in that Formosa first, but, you know, it did so much work for him early on, and it's really on her to sort of adjust and sort of, show what she can do to stop that. And given how quickly Mitchell, you know, selected his Pokemon going into this game, I wouldn't be surprised if we see that Garchomp and Vikavolt lead once again. No, it was very, very effective. And I, looking just down on the paper, I don't know how many answers Tiffany has to it. Of course, with the Garchomp being that fast, that brings a lot more pressure to it. We also saw Garchomp not get knocked out by the Pheromosa Ice Beam. So one of his best sort of 
you know, One of his assets. best counters, actually, to things that counter Garchomp is just being able to survive that Ice Beam. We do see the same lead here. Garchomp and Vikavolt out on Mitchell's side of the field. Uh, on Tiffany's side of the field, it looks like we see the Alolan Muck again, but this time it's actually the Alolan Executor that's acting as its partner and not... Uh, yeah, and not the Tapu Fini like we saw last game. No Tapu Fini, obviously something she didn't think did enough for her. So she switches up and brings a Lolan Executor. So that's going to be a slightly different setup for her. And I think this might be a better answer, of course. Vikavolt, Vikavolt does still keep it in check with a Bug Buzz, but not as bad as it was when it was Grass and Psychic. So Dragon helping out a little bit there. Once again, we see Muck protecting the first turn. And once again, we see that Earthquake from the Garchomp. So this Garchomp is not afraid of anything right now. It looks like Mitchell is going to stick with the same strategy that so-called Disquake, uh, starting off with an Earthquake into the Executor. And Vikavolt, though, switching it up with a Bug Buzz, targeting that Executor. Will it be able to survive, unfortunately, it is knocked out, and we w we may never know what that executor is, was meant to do. No, we're not going to be quite sure. Poor Merck, in the past couple of rounds, both games, his partner's just been knocked out on turn one. So Merck trying to pull its weight on its own, definitely going to be up against it. We did see it miss the knockout on the Vikavolt there. Going to be a little bit hard. That's something it really wants to be able to get. And not getting that just shows that Mitchell's team's been trained quite defensively as well. So I think he's hit this really good balance between offense with the combination of Earthquake and Discharge and defense in the way he's trained his Pokemon to eat up these hits. Yeah, and I got to say, I really love how he's used the extra, um, you know, stat and potential that his Garchomp has. Uh, instead of putting it into speed because of that choice scarp, he may have put it into, you know, maybe the HP, maybe the special defense and giving it this advantage that it needs to just stick around on the field for a couple of hits and survive anything that can take it down. It really allows him and gives him the freedom to stick with the same strategy and force his opponents to figure out, well, I know it's really fast. I know it's going to deal a lot of damage. How do I stop it? And Tiffany's answer might be swaggering her own Muck. Now, thanks to the fact that Muck does make contact with the ground and that Misty Terrain is activated, Muck will not be confused. Instead, it'll take a plus two attack boost and it survives the discharge from the Vikavolt. So if this Stone Edge connects, assuming we do see the Stone Edge again, it's going to be massively powerful. Instead, we see the knockoff onto Garchomp, but it holds on with just a sliver of health, dealing some damage back with that rough skin and confirming that it is holding, or it was holding, I should say, the Choice Scarf. Very, very good play there from Tiffany, showing one of the options her team has. The side swagger uh, using that Misty Terrain definitely to her advantage. Unfortunately, Muck being one of the slower Pokemon on the field just wasn't able to do enough. And missing the KO with that knockoff, just not really what she needed that turn. I think Muck needed to be in a position to do a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. Unfortunately for Tiff, though, she clicked in that forfeit very quickly. Losing that uh, knockout was not really something that she was looking for. But it happens. It is only round two here of Swiss. And Mitchell is certainly a great opponent to have that round loss to. Uh, we saw him do amazingly well in San Jose. And I've, I imagine Imagine, especially seeing him just play that combo so strongly throughout the entirety of that match. Uh, we'll be seeing him, you know, continue to do well as the day progresses here in San Jose. I it's really clever. I love it. I really like the pairing that he's gone for there. And I think, in a way, it could be an answer to what he saw in San Jose. Of course, going to be a little bit harder to deal with it with things, hard trick room, you know, if you can shut it down with a taunt, that's fantastic. If not, then it's definitely a little bit harder. But there is one way to deal with it. And that way is to deal with pretty much everything by just knocking it out, just doing really large amounts of damage. So I like how that team was built. Uh, I'm definitely interested to speak to Mitchell a little bit about it. We're going to have him in for a player interview in a couple of minutes, I believe. Yeah, so stick around, guys. We'll be right back with a player interview with Mitchell Davies. Thanks for watching.
<laughs> Welcome back to Dallas Regionals. I am joined by our winner of round two, Mitchell Davies. Uh, pretty good start for you today here. Oh yeah, thank you, thank you. It's uh, yeah, it was uh, like my first round. Uh, my opponent forgot his team sheet, so he showed up five minutes late, getting a game one loss. Game two, I kind of steamrolled through him. But yeah, it's very nice to already be 2-0. Yeah, it's uh, a great way to start a tournament. And of course, you come off the back of a really good performance at San Jose Regionals. Oh yeah, that San Jose Regionals was like really good. That was going to decide whether or not I would keep playing in the game. And I was like, well, if I do all right, I'll keep playing. But then I got top four, so. Yeah, definitely a reason to keep playing. Mm -hmm. We have seen you change up your team a little bit. I think that's what most people are interested in. So what made you change between San Jose and now? That was the big sort of thing. We have seen the meta shift, and it looks like you've shifted with it. So give me a quick rundown of this team. Well, uh, first of all, in San Jose, I had the rain mode. I had Pelipper and Golduck. And after that regional, every time I practiced, like, everyone had answers to rain, whether it be, like, Assault Vest, Cartana, Focus Sash, Electric Types. Um, Trick Room is another hard matchup for rain. Like, obviously, I had, like, Muck and Bulu, but, like, you can't do much against, say, Gavin's team, who has, um, like, Araquanid. Araquanid just tears through my team. And I last night, I was settled on the rain mode. I thought I fixed most of the problems, but I didn't. I was looking over it, and I was like, I'm still too weak to this, but I can't get rid of this because I'll become weaker to this. And I scrambled last minute. My friend, Alberto, he, uh, he was talking about his team. He didn't talk about it a whole lot. He just told me the six Pokemon, and I, like, kind of made the team based off of his six Pokemon. Not a whole lot of help from him, but I think it's a lot better. Yeah, so the big thing we saw come out of San Jose, of course, Gavin won with that hard trick room. Right. What's your sort of answer to that? Have you gone for just a shutting it down or just overpowering it, perhaps? I actually went for both. I have Tapu Lele and Feramosa, which you lead, and you, um, you with Tapu Lele, uh, he has to lead Mimikyu. He'll lead Mimikyu, Porygon 2. You'll have Tapu Lele, Feramosa. And it gives you a whole lot of breathing room to work with because that means you're threatening, like, Feramosa's high jump kick onto Porygon 2 to knock it out one clean hit. Um, in the back, you would keep your Vika Volt. Vika Volt's cool because, like, it's pretty slow. Um, the only thing it loses to in terms of speed in Trick Room is Araquanid. But otherwise, it's bulky. It's very strong. It's got, like, base 145 special attack. So it's hitting very strong with Thunderbolts, Discharges, Bug Buzzes. So it's yeah, a, it did a lot of work for you in that did. previous game. We didn't see you use it in the regard that you just mentioned it, but you led it next to the Garchomp, which was a really strong pairing. Oh, it is. Is that something you just sort of, when you looked at the six, went, oh, I know this can be a lead? Uh, yeah, that's that's not really the go-to lead against her team, but um, Tiffany had Feramosa, and I know Garchomp is outspeeding Feramosa, so like having Earthquake or any other move on a Feramosa is like, going to do a lot of damage to it because it's frail. And then Vikavolt like backs it up, so her only way to set up Trick Room was Executor, and Executor is weak to Bug Type, and so if she did lead it, I was just going to Bug Buzz and keep Earthquake in, because I knew that would KO. Um, otherwise, I went for Earthquake Discharge because both of them are immune to the other moves, so it just it covers a lot of ground very well. Yeah, that's a really old combination. Yeah, the it is. Discquake is what it was dubbed back in 2010, and it's still popular. So you're feeling good about your team now. Is there anything you don't want to see today? Is there anything you're looking at? I don't want to say it too loud. Obviously, people might hear. Can I whisper it to you? Yeah, you no. can. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> no. Um, honestly, Scarf Lele outspeeds most of my team. Scarf Tapu Lele, um, and it, it gets very strong psychics, and I don't really have like a good answer to psychic itself besides Celesteela, but they could have, uh, they could have like Arcanine next to Tapu Lele. If they do that, if they lead like Scarf Lele, Arcanine, it's like already threatening Celesteela, who like beats Lele, but not if there's Arcanine on the field, especially with Intimidate. Like you can't deal enough damage to Lele to knock it out. That's like one of the things I'm worried about. The other thing is. Uh, Actually, Trick Room, um, Raquinid, Raquinid, and Hariyama do a lot of damage. So they like, are very powerful Pokemon. They are. If I uh, if I don't get to use Feramosa to knock out Porygon too, then I'm kind of left in the water. I have to stall out the Trick Room turns. They might even set it up again, you know. So I really have to like play well in stopping Trick Room. I do have Vikavolt as backup, but it's that only something so that I think it, people are going to be picking up on, and it's definitely a harder team to build. We've talked a little bit though about you know, how your team sort of comes together. How do you feel team building this year is compared to previous years? I, I think Ooh. it's a completely different ball game, but I'd love to hear from somebody who's been playing it. Uh, it's very, very fresh, because it's, it's a regional dex. You can only use so many Pokemon, like, 
You can't use like Gardevoir, which I would have liked in this format. Um, so like having a limited move pool of Pokemon to work with combined with like new Pokemon to the series, like the Alolan forms, the Tapus, the Ultra Beasts, like it is a very, very like fresh breath of life into the metagame because there's so much that hasn't been discovered. Like Vikavolt, I'm sure is like kind of hiding out lower, right? Like, it definitely is. You're, I think you're the first person I've seen on a stream with it, but I'd love to see you just keep on trucking with it. Thanks. I uh, just want to say it's not, my, it's not my team, so like I didn't come up with it. Um, it's Alberto's team. Uh, well, yeah. it might not be your team, but you seem to be doing pretty well with it. Yeah. So I wish you the best of luck in the rest of the tournament. Thank you. Hopefully we'll see you on the stream tomorrow. Uh, and we are going to be kicking over to a short break now, so we can get ourselves ready for round three, I believe. Right.